All right, guys, on this blindingly bright spring day, today we're going to talk about something that I thought over and thought would be a pretty darn cool topic, subject, or just thing to cover. And so today I wanted to cover the best survival tools of all time. Now, before we jump into this, and I'll probably annotate somewhere where we actually begin, a uh, few housekeeping rules for those who like to be disorderly. Um, when it comes down to this, this is going to be my opinion, my experience on the best categories or for each category, the best tool in it. So for instance, when we talk about Swiss Army knives, I will say um, Ranger or the Ranger uh, by Victorinox, right? And so that is kind of the way I'm making this list. At the same time too, this is specifically speaking about survival. Once again, Victorinox makes many, many Swiss Army knives and some of them are better and some of them are worse for survival. If you are an EDC enthusiast, this video probably, or I wouldn't recommend taking these suggestions for EDC. If you're an ultralight backpacker, wouldn't recommend taking these suggestions exactly. Um, in addition to, it's also worth noting um, for this video, um, this is going to be covering each and every category of popular tools. So this isn't meant to be uh, a video taken as, you know, you should carry a Leatherman, a Victorinox, an axe, a hatchet, a saw, you know, like some of these tools would pair well together, but this is not the intent of the video to say that each and every one of these tools you should have on your person. This is just saying for each category, this is in my opinion and in my experience, the best tool made for that category. All right, so with that kind of housekeeping rules out of the way, let's jump into it. So as kind of teased in the beginning, the first one we're going to talk about is the Victorinox or Swiss Army knife. Now, there are many, many different types of tools out there or Victorinox Swiss Army style knives out there. But for me, it has to be the Victorinox Ranger. And the reason why the Ranger is my pick is are there larger Victorinoxes out there? Yes. Are there ones with more tools? Yes. Are there ones with less tools? Sure. Um, but this one for me, I think the reason why the Ranger really works is there is not a single tool on this Ranger that isn't directly useful to survival in some way. Now, of course, there are some tools that are more useful than others but you know you have a really capable tool set of having a you know main blade a pen blade you have a saw you have scissors you have a um, chisel on the back of it and so each and every one of these tools I can think of immediately even things like the corkscrew you know a little bit less useful outdoors but I can think of immediately uses in the wilderness for survival for this tool. I mean, I'd say probably the least useful specific tools are probably gonna be your toothpick and your tweezers, but even still you could function and make those, you could make those useful in a survival situation. So for me, the Ranger is the most concise, but yet comprehensive set of tools that comes on a Victorinox that I would recommend. Stepping it up into still sticking with multi-tools, but going over to plier-based multi-tools, I just like to say Leatherman off the top. So these are gonna be my choice for Leatherman because personally, I really dislike outside of Victorinox, I really dislike pretty much every other brand of plier-based multi-tools, but the Leatherman Surge, even if you do like the other brands, is undeniably the king of survival. And that really is because you get these meaty, very large, very heavy-duty plier head uh, plier heads here. And once again, this is the generation one version of the surge. So this is not quite what you would see in the generation two, but this is the one that I had on hand. So I just pulled out my gen one. I also have a gen two surge and I love both of them. But anyways, so you have your saw and the really cool thing and very surprising that really no other multi-tools do this, but you have your T-shank adapter saw so you can incorporate larger saw bits and other bits into the T-shank adapter. You have, of course, your main blade, your fully serrated blade, you have your scissors. Honestly, a lot of the tools that you see the Ranger, the Victorinox Ranger, are duplicated in this tool. The only primary addition is that really thick, meaty, plier head. And even so with my Gen 1, I converted the large flathead screwdriver to being a chisel. Um, hopefully you guys can see that there, but uh, I converted that to being a chisel. So once again, very similar to the tool set of the Ranger. And also, once again, 
uh, saying that, you know, there's not really a single tool on the Leatherman Surge that I couldn't immediately see different survival tasks or uses for different survival tasks. So that is without a doubt the best multi-tool or like Leatherman based tool that you can get for survival. All right, moving over to folders. Now folders are a little bit complex because there's plenty of pocket knives and folders as a whole. And I will say the Cold Steel 4MAX Scout is probably my choice. And are there larger folders? Are there heavier duty folders? Probably, but I think the most effective folder within reason for survival specific tasks is going to be the 4MAX Scout. And that's because it's a reasonably portable knife. And don't get me wrong, it is still large holding it up to something like this Bach, or not Bach, oh, Silky Gone Boy, you guys can see there. You know, it's about three quarters of the size, so this is by no means small. It's also well over a half inch thick, so it is a meaty, meaty knife. But I will say, as far as a practical folding knife for survival tasks, this is probably about the best you can get because you'll see a lot of other tanky folders out there by other companies, and they're kind of, you know, glorified or made to look tanky. This thing is legitimately tanky. Like, you can actually beat this thing and it will not break. That triad lock is super, super stout. And in addition to that too, it's worth noting that you can get this in a plethora of different steels. This one is of course the Taiwanese made OS 10A version, but you can get an American, I wanna say it's American CPM 3V, and then there's an Italian version in another steel. I'm blanking on those ones at the moment, but you can get higher end versions of the 4MAX Scout, and those are only better than this. Um, um, at least in edge retention and you know corrosion resistance and other such performance tasks. So anyways, that is the 4MAX Scout. Any of its variants, even the OS 10A, in my opinion, would be perfectly suited to survival. All right, moving over to fixed blades. So this one is probably the hardest category for me to choose because honestly, when it comes to survival, there are so many amazing fixed blades out there. But I think the one that not only myself, but also a large portion of people could come to a consensus on really thinking is probably one of the best survival specific fixed blades is going to be the SE6. Now I do have a strong love for my Chris Reeve knives Pacific, but I think that the SE6 would probably edge it out if in no other reason it's sheer availability. Like you can go on Amazon today and buy an SE6, whereas a Chris Reeve knives Pacific, well, good luck trying to get one because they just really are like unobtainium. So I wanted to throw something in here that is very attainable. And so for me personally, I'd probably still choose my Chris Reeve knives specific, but the SE6 is really a very strong contender. It's very well made. Um, mine has been slightly modified as you guys can probably tell. I laid back that bevel to a 17 degree per side. And that's because this 1095 is differentially heat treated. It's definitely not going to crack or chip or you know just break off. So I felt pretty confident leaning it back to that lighter degree per side angle for extra slice ability, especially being the fact that this is a full flat grind knife. So it's already lending its hand very well to slicey tasks. Anyways, the ergonomics too are right there. The SE6 is just a super, super hard knife to beat, um, but there are plenty of really solid fixed blades out there. I just think that the SE6, like if I had to choose one, especially one that's in my collection, the SE6 is probably going to be the most well-rounded, but things like the Falcon even A1 are great. Even the Rat 6 and CPM S35VN is another great contender. Um, gosh, there's just so many in this price range and in this like size range, but that's the one that we're choosing for the video. All right, next one up is going to be the saw. Now, once again, there are bigger, badder, and meaner saws out there. What I'm talking about for this video is survival and like personal survival specifically. So could you go out and get like a 30 inch buck saw? I have them in the collection too. I could have pulled out a 30 inch buck saw, but what I really wanted to focus on was personal survival and field portability. So for me, I chose the Silky Gomboy. This is the 210, so this is the slightly larger version. Um, and this one, 
of course, is the curved blade. And I think that the curved blade with the 210 size is not only super pocket friendly, like you guys can see once again in comparison, you know, it's uh, definitely comes in smaller and folded state than something like the SE6. But yet when you unfold it, you get a really good working edge. And also once again, that silky cutting performance is there. I, I will say too, you know, originally I was going to choose my Baco Laplander. And I think that the Baco Laplander is probably the next best choice for this. But I chose the Gomboy because uh, the Gomboy is honestly very durable. Like back in the day, there was a lot of uh, durability comparisons between the Gomboy and the Baco Laplander. And the Baco Laplander came out on top for durability. But I have used, abused, and this blade is bent. It might be hard to see on camera, but trust me, this blade is bent, unfortunately. Um, and so I can say, you know, this thing has taken a beating. And I do feel confident saying that this is one of the best survival saws that you can get bar none. Um, once again, there are other choices out there. The Baco Laplander is probably my second place choice because it is very durable and reasonably comparable, but the Gomboy is, from an efficiency standpoint, more effective. Like, it is more efficient. All right. Next one up is going to be the hatchet. Now this one's definitely going to be a controversial pick because I know that there are a lot of people like when it comes to hatchets, axes, and like bigger woodcraft tools, a lot of people have different preferences. Some people prefer to have, you know, a thicker, more burly, uh, you know, edge. But for me, I will say in my experience, the GBA wildlife hatchet is one of the top picks and for me is my top pick for a hatchet for survival and that is because primarily due to this longer relief and slightly slender you know profile to the hatchet i feel like this thing punches well above its weight like it's a tiny hatchet even it's a small hatchet even for hatchets in general um but it punches well above its weight i've built shelters between this uh silky gomboy and this hatchet i have with just these two tools built more multiple shelters, uh, you know, wilderness survival shelters. So I know for a fact that, you know, you're not going to drop huge trees with this, but if you need to collect, you know, firewood, kindling, um, and shelter material, you know, if you're cutting down like wrist thick trees, this hatchet is going to do a really good job, especially when you pair it with something like that Gomboy. You know, it's really, it really does punch above its weight. So for its size, its portability, once again, similar to the Gomboy, I'm trying to focus on, you know, something that's like a practical survival choice, not just saying like, oh, this is the best, like this is a very practical choice and it's the best of the practical choices in my experience. All right, stepping it up to a larger tool, if you do need an ax, once again, this is probably gonna be controversial because it's again a GBA. This is the GBA Scandi Forest Ax. This is my very well-loved, used, and not usually too abused um, ax. But uh, yeah, this is a Scandi Forest Axe by GBA. And honestly, um, this is another one that, once again, very similar to the Wildlife Hatchet because GBA has a longer running um, Scandi grind and because they have a thinner overall taper to their bit, these things bite very deeply into wood. So they're not the best when it comes to, you know, felling hardwoods like hickories, oaks. But if you do throw them into things like birch, spruce, um, any of your kind of softer or semi-soft woods, these things will punch well above their weight because they bite insanely deep into the material. And I've felled dozens upon dozens of trees with this ax. Um, I've built shelters with it. I've bucked trees, plenty of trees with this thing. Um, there's really not much I haven't done with this ax outside of maybe, you know, like felling hardwood trees because we don't have any in Alaska um, or like proper hardwood trees like uh, hickory. But um, overall, this thing is very, very good, very reliable. And it's something that I would definitely trust in my life to. And so it has to be the best ax um, for survival. Once again, not my only ax in the collection, but it just for its size, for its head weight and general weight as a, a rule, it punches well above its weight. All right, guys, last one up and finally finishing the tools is going to be the machete. Now, admittedly, I will say this machete is probably the largest one. If you're going to disagree,
agree, like it's probably the best one to disagree with me on because up in Alaska, we just don't really use machetes that much. They can be applicable in some applications, but by and large, machetes just aren't that useful here. However, the one that I would choose is the Condor per Bushcraft Parang. This guy is honestly, it works very well, it does everything I need it to do, and it is just a pretty well put together piece of kit. It's also super, super cheap. So, you know, it's hard to go wrong with in general. Like you can get these things for like $30, $40. And I will say they usually perform very well. They have a nice, you know, overall fairly thin stock. They're still not super flexible, like a thinner, like Latin machete, but overall they have a good spine to them, but a nice long drawn out um, grind. So they're going to bite very deeply into wood or other brush like materials. And so the performance really should be there. I would say for most applications, if you're cutting through lighter brush, you know, like grasses, vines, this thing's probably gonna be a bit overkill and it might not actually cut through lighter materials that well. Cause I think Parangs, by and large, are usually like a medium weight machete. Um, so they have like some flex, but not much flex. So it makes them better for cutting into harder materials um, or less flexible materials, but not as good into lighter or more flexible materials. So anyways, it's a pretty good bridge uh, between um, the gaps of like a heavier weight, like kukri machete versus um, something like a Latin machete. Anyways, that's my choice. Um, once again, it might not be the best, but from my experience, it's worked very well and it's been the best machete I've tested, even against other more expensive or more rare machetes, or machetes that I've had. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.